You're gonna need some basic tools. Some of them uh, are supplied by the propeller manufacturer and will come with your, your kit. This little contraption is uh, something we're gonna show you how to use. It comes with every whirlwind propeller. It basically slides over the blade to give you a, a flat surface to, from which to measure from. This is a protractor that you would get if you ordered a warp drive propeller. It sits on the front of the, the reason that one side is, this by the way is a, is a warp drive blade. Uh, it's what's called a straight tip and it does not have the nickel edge on it. So this would sit on the blade with the rigid part, which is the gray part, down like that and then you tighten up these wing nuts a little bit and this is slightly flexible and what it does is when you mount it to the wing to the tip of the propeller it keeps this from wobbling so that's really what you want is this to stay stationary against the gray plastic and the white thing is just to hold it up against it you don't want to tighten it too much because eventually this thing will crack but uh, that's how that works so that's a protractor. Now this protractor is kind of handy. I think it even is available in the spruce catalog. And uh, it can be used on any propeller. It doesn't have to be for warp drive. Uh, if you don't want to use a protractor or you just don't have one and you happen to have a smart level, a digital level, uh, you use that. You would use that in combination with this flat paddle for instance because it gives you a location where you could put the, the level parallel up to it and that also gives for a nice uh, nice arrangement now as far as which is more accurate the digital level or the protractor with the bubble they're both the same okay the the protractor with the bubble even though it's a mechanical instrument is down to like 0.2 degrees you can easily see with the bubble you need uh, the proper you know like this propeller comes with the allen bolts six millimeter so you're going to need something to tighten that up with uh, something that also will fit up against your torque wrench because you're going to need a, a torque wrench and the manufacturer of the propeller will tell you what the torque specifications would be for the inboard and the outboard hardware. Of course, the main bolts take more torque than the little bolts. We're gonna install it. Now, there's a spinner bulkhead here. Make sure your orientation of the blades, if there is one, to the spinner bulkhead. Usually, there'll be like a little cutout for the blades to clear or something. Like this, this has holes in order to be able to get to these outer bolts. So if there is such a feature on your spinner bulkhead, pay attention to that and then insert or install the propeller accordingly so that you so it then lines up with it. Initially just kind of get everything started with, the, with your fingers. The other thing you want to pay attention to as well is you know make sure that your your threads and your lugs are clean and free of debris. What you want to achieve basically is the propeller being stationary up against the engine, but not tight, because if it's tight, how are you going to turn the blades? So, and you do want to turn the blades because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to set the pitch of the blades uh, to the number of degrees for our first flight or our first run up. <clears throat> so, now I'm going to back off each one, each of these. And I'm going to then tighten it just until I feel a little bit of resistance and the tiniest bit more. And the reason for that is I want to be sure, and you're just going to do that to, to every bolt like that. I want to be sure that the propeller is in fact stationary up against the engine and doesn't wobble because if it wobbles, how am I supposed to be able to rely on any surface to be true? Like, like for instance, if I now take my, my smart level 
and I set it up against some vertical surface here, I want to make sure that that surface stays true for every measurement. So if I were to like now put this up against here and it's flat, and I would then set it to, uh, uh, to zero, then I could now keep this setting and I could use it, I could move it out to the tip and I could use it as a reliable reference to this surface. Now let's talk about that for a second. Let me also grab the protractor and I've got the protractor here. It's the same deal. Um, you put this up against some flat surface and you center it. Now this has a little locking device on the back side, a little red knob, so make sure that's loose. And then I set this until the bubble is level. Now, we're going to talk about reference angles, as in, as in uh, reducing the complexity of the, of, the, of, of the brain thinking or math associated with what you're really trying to do. All you're trying to do at the end is have the same reference or the same amount of degrees from this surface to the to the whatever tip of the prop or where you put your wooden paddle from from whirlwind. You're not there you're, you're not concerned about this being zero right now. Okay? You don't have to go back and level the plane. You don't have to put shims underneath the tail. You don't have to do any of that. What you do want to make sure of is that the plane is not allowed to move up and down, okay? Because this angle is going to keep changing when that, when that happens. You don't, you don't want to do this out in the wind. You don't want to do this with no support underneath the tail, like the plane just sitting on the suspension. Uh, and, and if you did, let's just say you, were, you did two blades and your suspension, your suspension was kind of like up a little bit and then someone leaned on the plane and, and it fell down and, and now it took another different set and uh, you, then the third blade is going to be all messed up and so that's no good. So you want to block the plane from moving on the suspension. Uh, don't do this in the wind. Don't be concerned about this being zero degrees because let's say this was five degrees and you want to set this at 20 and then you really just set this to 25 because you're already at five, it doesn't make any difference. It's the difference between this and this that is your total angle. It doesn't have to be zero and 20. It could be, it could be two and, and 22 or one and 21. So just keep that in mind. It makes it easier to do the job. Okay, now rotate your propeller until one blade is level or roughly level with the ground or your hangar floor and at, at that point get a quick measurement so that you can get the other two blades if it's a three blade of propeller into the same place. Now after that, uh, after you've measured that then you move along and you uh, bring your tools in and we're going to work on the protractor next. <clears throat> the protractor you would put at the tip of the blade and tighten down your little screws here. Get the. Now, I have to say, if, you, if your propeller is anything like this one, where it is not flat on the back side, uh, I would say that the protractor is fairly non or unreliable to be used in this fashion. You can still use the protractor on a propeller with a slightly rounded back but you would install a, a tool like this that will give you a uh, flat surface from which to work off of. If you install this just very lightly, you know, make sure it's somewhat vertical until you start feeling a little friction, just tap it just another sixteenth of an inch and then that locks in place. Basically, you want to initially just kind of look for the general uh, status of things, meaning you, you're you looking at your whole propeller, you know which way your engine rotates, or if you don't know, you need to find out to make sure you have the correct propeller. These, these blades have the nickel edges or the leading edge here, which obviously the engine is then going to rotate in this direction. It's going to rotate clockwise. If your propeller 
leading edge was down here, it would be the wrong propeller for the airplane, and you'd have to exchange it, unless, of course, your engine turned the opposite direction. Take a look at the basics, which means go back to your initial flight training and look at what makes an airplane fly. The propeller is nothing more than a wing. If you have a negative angle of attack, you're not producing any lift. You cannot fly with negative angle of attack. If you have zero angle of attack, you're not producing any lift. So you know, just from the basics, that the propeller has to be on this side of vertical, okay? Now, that kind of gives you a mental picture, because I've seen time after time, someone will set two blades and then this one will be set at perfectly 20 degrees, but it's in the wrong direction. Guess what? It's just not going to run, or it runs with vibration. Now, if you kind of go vertical just to get started, and you already set your your protractor here to the bubble being level, then you can take, also pay attention that you don't like flip your tools around, you know, or, or this way or that way, you know. Now, then I'm going to put it here and I'm holding it parallel with the piece of wood, okay? Now, then you want to rotate the blade to the bubble becoming level again. Now, that's only true we did show you how you go in here and you set the bubble to level. Next thing you want to do is look at the actual protractor. Okay, what does that mean? Well, for me, that means right now, and, and don't be confused about the numbers because remember what I said, it's all in reference to whatever you're at. So right now it shows uh, that I am one degree past 90 here. Okay, so let's say I want to do 20 degrees. If I, I'm going to undo the lock. If I go to 90, I've already gone one degree. If I go another 20 degrees, there's 10, there's 20. That's 20 degrees I moved. I'm going to go back one because I started one on this side. That means I, I moved it a total of 20 degrees, or I shifted it over 20 degrees. I'm going to lock it right there. Now, if... I, I know that I'm going to tip the front of the propeller in this direction, which means that if I just want to test it now, if I tip there, eventually it's going to go level. That means that, yes, I did it right. I went the right direction, okay? So now my tool is set up to be used. I'm going to tip it until the bubble gets in the middle. When the bubble is in the middle, I'm at 20 degrees. So that's my job now. I'm going to turn the propeller until the bubble is in the middle. Now, it can be that you have to, you know, make sure, like I said, that the inner bolts are just tight enough that the prop doesn't wobble. The outer bolts have to be totally loose or nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to do this. A Little bit of wiggling and shaking back and forth will help you if it's tight. Once that's done, you can now take your wrenches and just snug up this one and the one below just a tiny bit and then move on to the next blade. It's not necessary if there's already a little bit of friction here and you don't feel like the blade's going to move, but you can always go back and double check when you're done. At that point, don't touch this blade, you know, grab the propeller by another blade. And some people take the spark plugs out so that it's easy to rotate and all that. You can also just turn the engine very gradually so that the compression is not keeping you from turning it smoothly and shifting the plane all around. Now once you get back here, grab your tape measure again and you measure the 40 or 41 inches that we had and okay and that just has to be you know plus minus a quarter inch and then you do the same thing again. Put your, uh, your tool on here, or the protractor at the tip if it's a flat bladed prop like a warp drive. Look at the thing, okay, it's a negative degree, that's definitely not what I want. Okay, that's vertical, I'm going to be positive uh, angle of attack from there. 20 degrees is going to be 
somewhere over here. Take your tool, don't disturb it. Put it on there. And then, you know, make sure you hold it so that it stays parallel with your tool. Rotate it until the bubble is in the middle. And this has to be, you know, very, very, very precise. Um, you, you want the bubble to be exactly in the middle. And I would probably go through this, you know, twice. Even after you tighten down the bolts a little bit, go and check it again. Make sure that it's right on the money. If it's out, quarter degree, half a degree, then you will have vibration. Now, that being said, don't get completely, um, you know, bogged up in the details as far as the precision of this for your first run-up. Because chances are with a Viking or a Rotax or, you know, let's just say those as far as the RPM, you're going to want 4,800, 4,900, 5,000 static RPM with the brakes locked. If you're not even close to that and you spend three hours setting the propeller at the absolute precision pitch that you can get, you just wasted three hours. So. You just kind of get it close, run it up, tie the tail down, make sure you're close to your takeoff RPM, and then at that point, you set it perfect. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind when you're working on this, on these propellers is that you have a set of big bolts and usually a set of smaller bolts. Well, guess what? You want to prioritize the bigger ones because the larger bolts because if you look at them as equals even though you're tight torquing them to different values like the manual what you're going to end up with is some problems if you focus on these as being your main bolts and these being your secondaries you won't have any issues alternative to using the protractor uh, is to use a smart level of course, they have their own little tricks. You have to lose, learn how to use yours. Uh, basically, you're going to set it up against the prop hub after the propeller is just tight enough that it won't wobble. And zero it. Use the button to zero the uh, level. Then move it out to the, keep it exactly the same way as you had it in there. Uh, lay it up against the, the uh, alignment uh, tool and see what it's reading. Then just rotate it until you get the number of degrees that you want. Then uh, what I usually do is I take my level, I kind of just set it somewhere so that it sits in the direction that I want it so that when I get the next blade in, pick it up and it's ready to go. Then I don't have to worry about if I had it this way or if I had it this way or whatever. You know, it just makes it a little easier.